Hello, and welcome to our course on data engineering. I'm Lack, and I lead analytics and AI solutions on Google Cloud. In this module, we will look at the job of a data engineer. So who's a data engineer? A data engineer is someone who builds data pipelines. And so we'll start by looking at what this means. What kind of pipelines a data engineer builds and what the purpose of these pipelines is. Having looked at the task of a data engineer, we will look at why we suggest that you do data engineering in the cloud, on Google Cloud Platform to be specific. We will look at the challenges associated with the practice of data engineering and how many of these challenges are easier to address when you build your data pipelines in the cloud. Then we will look at what the goal of the data pipelines that you build is. If you build them correctly, what kind of things do you enable in the organizations that you're building these data pipelines for? Finally, we will look at a few example reference architectures. Reference architectures are architectures that you adapt. And in order to do that, you will have to know the purpose of each of the pieces of that data architecture. So we will look at the component products in greater detail in this specialization. But here, we start with a high-level view of the purpose of the various products. What does a data engineer do? As we mentioned, a data engineer builds data pipelines. But why? Why does the data engineer build data pipelines? Because they want to get their data into a place, such as a dashboard or a report or a machine learning model, from where the business can make data-driven decisions. The point of a data pipeline is to make data-driven decisions. But in order to be able to do that, the data has to be in a usable condition so that someone can use this data to make their decisions. Many times, the raw data is by itself not very useful. One term you will hear a lot when you do data engineering is the concept of a data lake. A data lake brings together data from across the enterprise into a single location. So you might get the data from a relational database or from a spreadsheet and store the raw data in a data lake. One option for this single location to store the raw data is to store it in a cloud storage bucket. So what are some of the key considerations when deciding between different data lake options? What do you think? What are some of the key considerations you need to keep in mind as you build a data lake? One, does your data lake handle all the types of data that you have? Can it all fit into a cloud storage bucket? If you have an RDBMS, a relational database, you might need to put the data not in a cloud storage bucket, but in Cloud SQL, a managed database. Two, can it elastically scale to meet the demand? As your data collected increases, will you run out of disk space? Of course, this is more of a problem with on-premises systems than with cloud. Third, does it support high throughput ingestion? What is a network bandwidth? Do you have edge points of presence? Four, is there fine-grained access control to objects? Do users need to seek within a file? Or is it enough to get a file as a whole? Cloud storage is blob storage, so you might need to think about the granularity of what you store. And fifth, can other tools connect easily? How do they access the store? Don't lose sight of the fact that the purpose of a data lake is to make data accessible for analytics. We mentioned our first Google Cloud product, the Cloud Storage Bucket, which is a good option for staging all of your raw data in one place before building transformation pipelines into your data warehouse. But why choose Google Cloud Storage? Commonly, businesses use Cloud Storage as a backup 
and archival utility for their businesses. Because of Google's many data center locations and high network availability, storing data in a GCS bucket is durable and performant. As a data engineer, you will often use a cloud storage bucket as part of your data lake to store many different types of raw data files, CSV, JSON, Avro, Parquet, etc. You could then load or query them directly from BigQuery, which is a data warehouse. Later in the course, you will create cloud storage buckets using the console and the command line as you see here. Other Google Cloud Platform products and services can easily query and integrate with your bucket once you've got it set up and loaded with data. Speaking of loading data, what if your raw data needs additional processing? You may need to extract the data from its original location, transform it, and then load it. One option is to carry out the data processing on something like Cloud Dataproc or Cloud Dataflow. We'll discuss using these products to carry out batch pipelines later in this course. But what if batch pipelines are not enough? What if you need real-time analytics on data that keeps arriving continuously and endlessly? In that case, you might receive the data in Cloud PubSub, transform it using Cloud Dataflow, and stream it into BigQuery. We'll discuss streaming pipelines also later in this course.